surprise me. Amen. The way he sets up the songs without coordination, but how they just go on and fit right in. Amen. What we're going to be preaching about. Amen. Certainly God knows. God knows. Amen. <coughs> Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for this preaching and the time. We ask you that you would just take control right now. Yes. That you would use me as your instruments to communicate effectively, oh God, what it is you would have your people to know. Encourage us and strengthen us, oh God. Let us know that we've been in your presence today. It's in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. We also pray the words that you just heard. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Lord, come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Bread from heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread from heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread from heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Amen. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. First, give me honor to God and to His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that is in this place. Give me honor to First Lady Harris. Amen. To Deaconess Warren, to our deaconesses in training, to our deacon in training, to our musician, Brother McPherson. Amen. To all of our members. We're so glad to see you out this morning. Amen. Amen. It's such a beautiful day that God has given us. Amen. Amen. And and he has given us the word today. Amen. 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 So if you can turn with me to a very familiar passage, the 23rd Psalm. Amen. The 23rd Psalm. Amen. And we're actually going to focus on verse 5. Amen. 23rd Psalm, verse 5. Access to the Word of God. It's also on the, the wall. Amen. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Amen. That is the Word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Please pray on the topic today. Amen. Ready for God's overflow. Amen. Ready for God's overflow. Amen. Amen. See how the song fit right in? Amen. Amen. Asking the Lord to fill our cup. Amen. God will fill it to overflow. Amen. Amen. The news over the last few weeks has been full of stories of overflow. Amen. Three powerful hurricanes, Irma, I think I got the names right, Jose and Maria, have caused an overflow of flood waters in Texas, overflow of seawater in Florida, and an overflow of mudslides in Puerto Rico. Earthquakes in Mexico overflowed people's fears of missing loved ones in unstable buildings. In the Twitter sphere, that's where people tweet, there's been an overflow of nonsense from President Trump. Amen calling people out of their names without first seeking to understand yes. the reason for their protests. Instead of uniting the country, he seems to be dividing us. Amen. So water overflowed his banks, fear overflowed families, and, and, di and diverse tweets, divisive tweets rather, overflowed social media and that was just in the last few weeks, amen. 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 You can probably think of someone else's overflow situation or even your own overflow situation. An overflow of debt and doubt. An overflow of busy devils and fiery darts. An overflow of spiritual wickedness in high places. With all this negative overflow, sometimes overwhelming you and me. Yes. I've got some good news for you instead. God is getting you ready for God's overflow. Amen. God is bigger than any hurricane. He's bigger than any flood. He's bigger than any earthquake. He's bigger than those crazy tweets that we read about. 
Amen. and hear about God's overflow. Amen. Amen. Will give you victory. Amen. Amen. God's overflow will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. 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 God's overflow brings love to your haters. Amen. God's overflow brings joy to your to your sad times. Yeah. God's overflow bring, brings peace when you're worried. Amen. Amen. Whatever your situation and need might be, God has an overflow that you need. That you that is exactly what you need right now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Gospel singer Tasha Cobbs, Amen. Leonard, and uh, is she a rap artist or an R and B oh. artist? Nicki Minaj. What is she? <laughs> rap artist. Okay. Yeah. They came together. We heard it last Sunday and created a song together titled, I'm Getting Ready. And it opens up with these words, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. The kind of blessings, the kind of blessings that's about to fall, fall on me. Because victory is here, keeps the feet at the door. God's done a new thing. Get ready. For overflow. Amen. amen. And then they go on and they proclaim, amen, that, that they're getting ready for something new in their lives. Amen. They're getting ready for something they've never seen before. Yes. Amen. They're getting ready for a new experience in the Lord. They're getting ready for God's overflow. Amen. The overflow from the world from the world. Amen. Your attitude can change when you're ready. Amen. To receive God's overflow. Amen. 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 Our text, amen, is a familiar passage of Scripture. Amen. Many have memorized at least the first verse of the 23rd Psalm. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Some have even memorized the entire 23rd Psalm. Perhaps you memorized it yourself growing up as a child. Amen. And you can or at least you've heard it over and over again, that you have it almost memorized. Amen. Amen. And if they don't know anything else in the Bible, a lot of people, they'll know, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. Amen. What I find interesting in this song is its structure, because it's written from what seems like one perspective, but upon deeper inspection into the text amen you'll see that it has two different perspectives yes, yes, yes. if you look at the entire song just to give context for verse 5 amen as you look at the entire psalm you'll see that it starts out first with saying talking about the Lord mm -hmm. amen in the words the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's like the psalmist is talking to someone else about the Lord. But then a shift occurs in verse 4. Verse 4, when he remembers going through some dark times. The shift occurs from talking about the Lord to talking to the Lord. You see, there are some times when you look back over your life, and you remember some dark times that you've been going through. Yes. Amen. You might find yourself talking about the Lord to someone. But then you have to say, wait a minute. I owe this praise to God right now. Yes. I've got to talk directly to God. Yes. And so the psalmist says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Yes. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Yes. My cup runs over. Yes. Surely, goodness and mercy yeah. shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I was struck by that shift. Amen. Of the psalmist talking to someone about the Lord. To being focused on talking to the Lord directly. Both of them speak about relationships, personal relationships, amen, that you and I ought to have with the Lord. The entire psalm is a personal psalm. It's filled with words, me, 
my, and I. Amen. Can you see those words there? Yes. My, me, and I. So the psalm is a personal psalm. It's a poem. It's a song and based on the writer's personal experiences with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It doesn't say his or her. It doesn't say he or she. It doesn't say there or them. It's talking about my experience, what I'm going through. And what the Lord has done for me. Amen. 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 What is your language? Amen. When you talk about God. Amen. Do you have talk about their relationships with God? Do you talk about other people's relationships with God? Or do you talk about your own relationship with God? Do you talk about what God has done for other people? That's okay. But you ought to be able to say what the Lord has done for you as well. Amen. Amen. Do you judge church folks as hypocrites, but don't talk about your relationship in terms of my, me, and I? Yes. Amen. What is your language when you uh, talk about the Lord? So these first three verses use my, me, and I. And then he shifts the focus to look at what the Lord has done for him. Amen. If he gets into uh, showing that he has confidence in the Lord. Amen. This psalm is one of confidence that shows that God is there to deliver whatever he needs. Amen. To show that God reigns, that God is in control. Amen. That everything that he needs, that God is bigger than any problem. Yeah. Amen. That the psalmist encounters. Amen. Amen. Because God is there. And God is meeting his every need. So our focus today is on verse 5 in this song. Amen. Verse 5 sets up a table that's being prepared. I like how the Good News translation puts verse 5. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. Amen. So we see here from a combination of the King James and the Good News translation that this table is a, a banquet table. Amen. And when we think about a banquet table, amen, we think about abundance. Amen. We think about a lot of food. We think about a lot of people. We think about happiness and cheer and laughter going on. Amen. So our text suggests that God does three things, amen, that you and I would do well, amen, to let go and let God do it himself, amen. So many times you and I try to step in and do it on behalf of God, amen. We were just talking about that this morning, where? In Sunday school, amen. We still encourage you to come out to Sunday school where you can learn a little bit more about the Lord. Amen. Amen. Too often you and I try to sit on the throne, in fact. We try to sit on the throne of our lives and do it my way. Amen. But here the psalmist lets us know, amen, that God is able to meet you at the point of your need. And that God is able to do it his way. Amen. If we would just step back. Get off the throne of our lives. Let God sit on the throne. Amen. Let God be in control. Yes. Amen. Then you will experience these three things. Amen. In your life. Amen. The first thing. That God is able to meet you at your need. Yes. And able to do in your life. It's right here in the first part of verse 5. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. Amen. That first thing is God prepares a banquet for you. God prepares a banquet table for you. Amen. Amen. This table, get in your mind, is a, a banquet table. Amen. With this picture in mind, you get a picture, like I said, of, of abundance and joy. And, and now in this context, it's very interesting because the banquet is where you wouldn't expect it to be. In full view of your enemies. 
in the presence of my enemies. Again, I like the way the Good News translation puts it. Where all my enemies can see me. Yeah. Amen. Those haters that want to see you not make it and be successful. Yes. God will prepare a table before those people. Yeah. Those people that want to try to trip you up along the way. Yes. God will prepare a banquet table for you. Yeah. Amen. In the presence of those people. Yeah. Amen. Just when they're calling you over and over again saying the bills are due. Don't you know that God will still prepare a table of abundance yeah. for you in their presence? Yeah. Amen. When they're, when people are walking away, shaking their head, I thought you were at this level, but what you're saying seems like you're down here. In fact, they might even come up and call you a hypocrite because you're not doing all the things that I thought you were supposed to do. Yeah. I thought you went to church. I thought you did this. I thought you did that. Amen. I'm talking about your haters. I'm talking about people that try to take away from who you are. Amen. Amen. God prepares a banquet for you yes. in their presence. When spiritual warfare gets hard, amen, God prepares a banquet. Amen. When you struggle to stand against the wiles of the devil, yes. Yes. amen, God prepares a banquet. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. In this case, it's going to be a banquet of the whole armor of God. Yes. So that you can put on that talent of salvation. You can carry around that shield of faith. Yeah. You can have everything tied together with truth. Amen. You can carry around that sword, which is the word of God. You can have your feet covered with the preparation and deliverance of the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God gives you all that you need. I tell you, when the tweets were going out... Amen. I was saying that there's spiritual forces in high places. Yes, Amen. When the tweets are being sent out yes. and I see that spirit of white supremacy standing up yes, and just being revealed, I have to pray and understand that we're in spiritual yes, warfare yes, right now. Yes. I don't blame the man, but I blame the spirit. Yes. Amen. That's coming out. Amen. I don't blame the person. I blame the spirit. Yes. Amen. Because our fight is not against flesh and blood. Yes. But it's against principalities in yes, high places. Yes, yes. Amen. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, yes. In the face of all of that, Amen. God prepares a banquet mm. for you. Yes. Amen. When all the tickets to our banquet may or may not get sold, yes. God is still going to prepare yes. his banquet. Yes. All the plans and all the things yes. that we put together. I mean, that's nice. But what I want to see is God's banquet. Amen. Be prepared. Yes. You know, I'm satisfied that God is going to have there who yes. he wants there. Yes. And God is going to have his banquet that day yes. on the 14th. Yes. Amen. Whatever the psalmist was going through in verse 4, when he talked about the shadow of the valley being in the valley of the shadow of death. Whatever that valley of the shadow of death is in your life. Amen. And whoever your enemies are yes, yes. in your life. Yes. You need to know that God prepares a banquet table right where your enemies can see it. When they marginalize you. When they overlook you. When they undervalue you. Yes, yes. And underestimate you. God is ready to prepare a table. Right there. God's power. And grace are so great. That I'm glad to report that there's a second thing. Amen. That God is able to meet you. At the point of your need. The second thing that God does. Is in the second part of verse 5. You anoint my head with oil. Yes. God anoints you as an honored guest. God anoints you as an honored guest. A consecration for kingdom purpose. Amen. Yes, Amen. It was the custom of the Hebrews, and we talked about it not that long ago, that when a guest shows up, Amen. That the head would be anointed with olive oil. Amen. That showed that that was 
a special guest that showed that that guest was being set aside, was being consecrated for special purpose. God wants to anoint you for special purpose. Amen. You recall that story that we talked about? Amen. It was at Pharisee Simon's house. Amen. And he was so stingy that when Jesus showed up, he was so stingy, he didn't even anoint Jesus with oil. Instead, what we saw was a picture of a sinful woman, yes. the Bible says, who had her sins forgiven. And she came in and she anointed Jesus as that special guest. Amen. Not on his head because she didn't feel worthy to anoint him on his head. But she brought in some special perfume and anointed Jesus' feet. Y'all remember the story? She dried his feet with his hair. Yes, yes, yes. And Jesus had to get on the guest, uh, uh, on the host of the house, on Simon, and point out to him the differences between the way he treated Jesus and the way she treated Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You see, God knows that you're going through. When others attempt to dishonor you, when others call you out of your name, yeah. When even someone as high as the president will tweet out some words that I can't even repeat from the pulpit. Amen. God is there to anoint you and to honor you. When people call you out of your name, yes, yes, yes. God is ready to anoint you yes. as a special guest. Yes, yes. God is ready to bring you in and to anoint you and call you special. God is ready to call you in and to set you aside yeah. for kingdom purpose. How many of you want to be used for kingdom purpose? Amen. 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 Our focus for this month. Hallelujah. Amen. Is to be revived. Yes. Amen. For yes. kingdom purpose. Amen. Amen. Our revival season is here. Yes. Our revival season is this month. Yes. In fact, on the 11th and the 12th, we'll be right here. Amen. Celebrating God's revival right in this place. Amen. So we invite you to come out. Amen. Amen. That God might come out and do a new thing in your life. Amen. That God might come out and speak a word into your life. Amen. That God might come out and anoint you. Amen. For his special purpose. Amen. How many of you it makes you feel good? Amen. That when somebody has dissed you. Amen. God is able to pick you up and anoint yeah. you. Yeah. Amen. And call you yeah. his special guest. Yeah. Amen. Romans 6.23 reminds us that the wages of sin is death. Amen. I tell you, the only thing that we deserve, the only paycheck that we deserve is death. But I'm glad there isn't a period there. Because the next thing is that even though the wages of sin is death, but... Hallelujah, that word that we love to hear. Amen. The contradicting antecedent of the gospel. The thing that turns around everything that was said before. But the free gift of God. Amen. Is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. Yes. Amen. We can celebrate today. Amen. That God anoints you as his special guest. Amen. So after God prepares a banquet table for you and he welcomes you and anoints you as a special guest. Amen. There's one more thing. Amen. That God is able to do to meet you at the point of your need and to do something about it. That third thing that God does is in the last phrase in verse 5. My cup runs over. Amen. God fills your cup to overflow. Amen. Amen. God fills your cup to overflow. I tell you, you can get ready. Amen. For God's overflow. Amen. Prophesy over your life right now. I'm getting ready for God's overflow. I'm getting ready. Amen. For God's overflow. Amen. What's in your cup? Amen. Isn't that something to wonder about? Amen. Some of you might have had a visual picture. I got some coffee in my cup. Or I got some tea in my cup. 
But I believe that when God gives you a cup, amen, that the thing you need to think about what's in your cup. You need to say that your cup has love in it. And God is getting ready to overflow my cup. My cup has joy in it. Hallelujah. And God is getting ready to overflow my cup. My cup has peace in it. And God is getting me ready to overflow my peace. God has forgiveness in my cup. And God is getting ready to overflow my forgiveness. God has self-control in my cup. And God is getting me ready to overflow in self-control. Are you ready for the overflow? Are you ready for a new experience in your life? Declare it over your finances. Amen. Get ready for the overflow. Declare overflow in your spirit. Amen. Get ready for the overflow. Are you ready for the overflow? Are you ready for what God can do in your life? Amen. Amen. There's a story that I heard about recently. Amen. About the Wycliffe Bible translators. That's a group of people that take the original text and translate it into languages that it hasn't been translated into yet. In fact, they say there's still about 1,600 languages that do not have the Bible in their spoken tongue. Amen. You can see them reflected up on this map over here. It's those red areas around the world. Amen. They still don't have the gospel translated in their own language. Of about 7,000 languages worldwide, there's still people that haven't heard the word of God in their own language. That's about 160 million people worldwide that still have not yet understood the Bible at the level that they grew up understanding their language. That's called a heart language. That language that you dream in. That language that you pray in. Amen. That language. Translator B. Bramlett was confident that God had used his team, his translation team, to change hearts in this culture called HDI. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to say Hadai. And the Hadai people. Amen. He was confident that he was going to see a change in the people's hearts. But when he got there, he didn't see the change that he was looking for. And so one night he had a dream. And God prompted Lee to look again at the Hadai word for love. Lee and his wife Tammy had learned that verbs in Hadai consistently end in one of three vowels. An I, an A, and a U. But when it came to the word love, they could only find the I and the A. And they were wondering why there was no U. Lee asked the translation committee, could you, and the word for love is D-V-I, could you divide your wife? Yes, they said. That would mean that the wife had been loved, but the love was gone. So yes, I can love, I can divide my wife. Could you deve, D-V-A, could you deve your wife, Lee asked. Oh yes, that kind of love depended on the wife's actions. She would be loved as long as she remained faithful and cared for her husband well. You could... Of course, devey your wife. Could you devu, DVU, your wife? We asked. Everyone laughed and bust out laughing. They said, of course not. That would mean that you would have to keep loving your wife no matter what she did. Even if she never got you water. Even if she never made your meals. Even if she committed adultery you would be compelled to keep on loving her. No, we would never say the voodoo. It just doesn't exist. Lee sat quietly there for a moment, thinking about John 3.16. And then he asked, could God the voodoo people? There was complete silence. Then tears 
started trickling down the weathered faces of the elders that were sitting there. Do you know what this would mean? This would mean that God kept loving us over and over, yeah. millennia after millennia, yeah. but all that time we yeah. rejected his great love. Yeah. Yeah. He is compelled to love us yeah. even though we have sinned more than any people. Mm -hmm. One simple vow. Mm -hmm. And the meaning was changed from I love you based on what you do to I love you based on who I am. Yes. I love you because of me yes, yes, yes. and not because of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. God has encoded, amen, the story of his benevolent love mm -hmm. and his unconditional love right into their language. Mm -hmm. Now the Hedai New Testament in Ephesians 5, 25 now reads, Husbands, Devu, your wives, just as Christ devoted the church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That same unconditional yeah. love is, avail is, is expressed right here in the 23rd Psalm. Yeah. You see, because there are no if-then statements in the 23rd Psalm. Yeah. You see, I believe that that's what makes it such a powerful song. Yeah. Because it's unconditional. Yes. There are no if statements. Lord, if I did right, then you would give me what I need. Mm -hmm. Lord, if I did right, then you would prepare a table before me. No, no, no. What we get out of the 23rd Psalm is because of who God is. Yes. Amen. That he prepares a yes. table before you. Yes. Because of who God is. Yes. Amen. He anoints your head with oil. Yes. Because of who God is. Yes. Amen. Your cup is going to overflow. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because of who God is. Yes. Amen. You can get ready. Amen. For the overflow. Yes. Amen. Because God has an unconditional way. Yes. Amen. Of coming in and loving you in spite of. In spite of the fact that you fell down and, and got dirty. Mm -hmm. In spite of the fact that you kept on sinning. Yeah. In spite of the fact that you turned against them. Yes. Amen. God is going to keep on loving you. Amen. Amen. Isn't that something? Yeah. Amen. That when we read that verse in Romans 6.23. Amen. That when we were still sinners. Yes. Amen. That's verse, uh, I'm sorry, that's Romans 5.8. And that while we were yet sinners. Amen. Christ died for us. Yes. Amen. Even though he knew we were going to sin against them. Yes. Even though he knew we were going to fall short. Even though he knew we were going to be just as dirty and acting up just like that Pharisee and that sinful woman. Yes. Amen. He still came. And he still made a way. Yes. He still loved us yeah. with that type of, that devout type of love. Amen. Amen. That even though we would slap him in the face. And reject them. Yes. God still came. Yes. Jesus still came. We can have that same testimony in our lives. Yes. Amen. Because all because of what Jesus did. Yes. Amen. Because Jesus paid it all. Yes. Jesus had the testimony himself. Yes. Amen. Because when Jesus was walking along. Amen. And all the opposition that came against Jesus. When the enemies were building up. Amen. God still prepared a table before him. Yes. In the presence of his enemies. Yes, yes. Amen. It was the communion table. Yes. Amen. That we're about to celebrate from yes. later on. Amen. In a few minutes. Amen. God prepared a table. Amen. For Jesus. Amen. In the presence of his enemies. That he might express his grand purpose. Amen. That God sent his son here to do. Amen. God anointed Jesus and prepared him for a special calling. Set him aside, amen, for special purpose. Amen. And finally, God filled Jesus' cup to overflowing. Even though he went through all of that trouble for us, even though he went all the way up to the cross amen. and hung up on that cross, yeah. right when he thought the cup would have been emptied, yes. God filled it to overflowing. Yeah. The overflowing love that came yeah. from there yeah. kept him up on that cross. And I tell you, even though he died up on that cross, he was buried in somebody else's tomb. I'm glad that on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hands. He got up that you and I might also get up 
amen, with all power in his hand. And that power still overflows today in our lives. Amen. God is ready to overflow that power. Yes, yes, yes. The power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Amen. That you might see God working in your life and doing something new in your life. Amen. Acts 1 8 says, records Jesus is saying, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. How many of you are ready to be a witness, amen, for the Lord? How many of you are ready to die to yourself, amen? Amen, I'm glad you keep on clapping, amen. Because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take setting some things aside, amen, and allowing the Lord to use you. Amen, God wants you ready for his overflow. Because of what Jesus did, you can be ready for God's overflow. You can declare in your spirit, amen. That I'm ready to sit down at the banquet table. You can declare in your spirit that I'm ready, amen, to be anointed by God. You can declare in your spirit that I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for God's overflow. Amen. Come on and give God some Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for your overflow.